everybody video here for you today and I guess you can call this an ancient America video but I make my videos off of about nine ten different lists one of those lists is the younger driest period haven't made a kind of a comprehensive video using Google Earth regarding that period in a long time I did this video back in June the huge mystery of the Carolina Bays so it's been more than a few months so why don't we go down to Camas Prairie Montana I have not talked about this place for about three years but a story can be told from overhead down here. Here's Camas Prairie right down here. A lot of you remember Randall Carlson talking about this on the Joe Rogan experience, but evidence of a massive flood that came through here. We're gonna talk about a few features, but why don't we take a time out, and go down to the beach in Florida where I was on the last day of my vacation. I filmed a clip. Let's go to that right now. I couldn't help notice the minis mini scale flood features here. I know a lot of you are familiar with Randall Carlson's work. But I'm just noticing different things here. Just couldn't help but notice, I'm weird. But right down here, this looks like Camas Prairie on a much, <laughs> a much smaller level. Those, Camas Prairie, I believe those are thousands of feet across and at least 60 feet high. And I'll try to leave a some appropriate links below. Here we are back at Camas Prairie. Some of these are up to 57 feet high. Evidence of a massive wave of water. You can get directional flow based on these ripple currents, but as you see here, they extend for a wide area. Evidence of a massive flood that went through here. And if we just take in, for instance, this one area, this is a house right down here. So that'll give you an idea of scale. Here we are looking north from that area. And that'll show you which way the water came from. See these ripples going all the way up here. And then out here, they kind of come from a few different ways based on the landscape. Carve some lakes that are still there. We're gonna take a look at a few different areas. There's one right down here. A lot of areas of the uh, walls around here. You can get evidence of a ancient flood. You can see right down here, these ancient shorelines. When the water receded out of here, were grooved into these little low crops here. Now I've looked into Camas Prairie a few times over the past few years. I just never made a video about it. So I thought I'd do this one today. Compile what you have learned. But here on this PDF, I'll leave this link below. It says catastrophic flood features at Camas Prairie, Montana. More unusual currents in Glacial Lake, Missoula. That Missoula is just south of here, but here is an overhead shot. And some of these uh, different directions that these paleo currents came from. It's hard to imagine a wall of water, seven, 800 feet deep going through here all at once. Some say it was the emptying. Some say it was the filling of this area. That's a little bit of debate. A lot of research might answer those questions someday. They carve these grooves here, some filled with water. Those are called cokes. These current ripples, they cover about 10 square miles, about 26 square kilometers. And this massive flood emptied in this area right down here. This is called the Perma Ridge right down here. Evidence of the flood. A few different features, but there are terraces, different Levels right there, evidence of the flood. Then you come over here and see the different terracing here, different elevations of the flood that finally poured out in here in one other area. But this is called the Perma Ridge right down here. Here is a map on the right, the flood features carved in the Perma Ridge down here. Here is a pic of the Perma Ridge. It says view looking west, flood waters from Camas Prairie tore over the ridge and carved flood features in the meta sedimentary rock here. This is what the Perma Ridge looks like. Flood tore over this ridge here. Notice this feature. This looks interesting right across the way here. Not sure what would have caused that right there. That is pretty interesting. Then we back out, show you one area right down here. With the flood. This is one area where water tore over the Perma Ridge came over here and then created a pool right down in this area, right down here. On the left there, it says view of Colt Lakes in bottom of rip channels on Perma Ridge, Flathead River in the distance. And then this is that area I just showed you. 
an expansion bar coming down here. Pool created when the paleo current came right over this ridge here. Back up by these huge current ripples. You notice here I got some things marked here. Big Creek Pass, Wills Creek Pass, Marco Pass, Duck Pond Pass. Those are the areas that the water poured through. We're going to talk about some features right up in this area. But also, the second place where this place drained was right over here. It's called Duck Pond Pass. Looks like Highway 28 runs through here today. This is where the flood came through. Rainbow Lake is up here today. And it came right down here and deposited features in this area right down here. Boyer Bench, Boyer Ridge, Locust Hill, right down there. Here's that area from overhead. You notice there was two areas here where an outlet current converged at Rainbow Lake, then poured out this way. This is Locust Hill, and this cut the main rip channel in two different directions right here. Here is a look at a map. You notice the currents came out here. This is Locust Hill, cut in two. This is where they converged to start this main outlet channel at Rainbow Lake right here. Here is Locust Hill right here. This is where the current came around this way and around this way. And if we look at the front of Locust Hill, we have a couple features here. Those Colk Lakes and Colks are simply created by underwater vortexes. Here is one in the Scab Lands of Washington. But these Colks are found all over this area. And this here on Locust Hill is called the upper rip wall, the middle rip wall, and the lower rip wall right down here. Oak Lakes, I believe this is called Banana Lake right there. That's just the remnants of a great flood that poured over here. Boyer Ridge, Boyer Bench. And there are a few other features right down here. Let's take a quick look. This is called the Piedmont Gravels. And if you go down here, you can see some evidences, layers of the flood here. Here are the Piedmont Gravels I just showed you. It says View Northeast, a steep depositional front of the Northwest Bench Expansion Bar. Flood current came between Baker Hill and Locust Hill. Shorelines visible down here on the Piedmont Gravels. And then this is the Boyer Bench right nearby. It says view northeast of flood gravels on Boyer Bench with numerous closed depressions, chute and pool structures. Steep depositional front marked by shorelines of Lake Missoula. There's the ancient, ancient lake shorelines right there. Bedrock of Boyer Ridge separates Boyer Bench from the lower Boyer Bar. These are all flood deposits of a great flood here. This is the area where the floodwaters came down. This is the Clark Fork River down here. Let's go back over into Camas Prairie here. Talk about a few other things. There are a few current ripples right down here on the very west side of the valley. Right down here, but let's go back to that main area and just see if we can see these down on Google Earth Street View. Right down here. Street view is kind of blurry down here, not the clearest picks. But can you just imagine being down here 12, 13,000 years ago? Not sure of the exact date of this flood. I'm not sure anybody is. Can you imagine water 400 feet maybe deeper than the top of this ridge here? It's coming down here and tearing right through this valley here. I don't even think we can imagine how incredible that was. You can see here, these current ripples, you really can't notice them, at least on blurry street view, but here they cut into the, cut into this one here. It's flood deposit, rocks of all sorts of shape there and size. Here is the Wills Creek Pass, when water came pouring down this way, created this expansion bar or a delta, Drop deposit down here when the water came into a calmer area. This is 200 feet high. This expansion bar, plunge pool here. Up in this area, there are some of those coke lakes here created by underwater vortexes. Here it says expansion bar below Wills Creek Pass. Gravels and 200 foot high bar were transported from the notch to the left of the photo. And here is a large Meta sedimentary rock deposited in the expansion. That is a 200 foot high flood deposit right there. These different current ripples down here, different directions. They are called the Wills Creek train ripples. 
And they are numbered one through five down here, right here, right here, and right here. Here is Markle Pass right here. And if water was pouring over this ridge here, hundreds of feet above this ridge, what could have led to that much water? Was it just a lake letting go of its contents or was there a more catastrophic end to the ice cap? Well, personally, I think it's a ladder. I think we had a pretty consistent flow of water here that was very, very deep. I don't think there could have been a lake big enough to hold all that. Markle Pass right here, these are called the lead gravels right down here. They were simply deposited when this flow came over this ridge here. Deposited right here. Here is Markle Pass. Water poured over this and left flood deposit. Large stones. Here are the stones deposited on the downward current side of Markle Pass. It says some unusual bars consist of gravels that were transported upslope and then dumped just over a sub-lake divide on the lee slope, referred to here as washover bars. Here it says catastrophic flood features. The Camas Prairie Basin gives you a little key what all these flood features mean. I learned a lot reading this. I will leave the link below. But here they are mapped out over this whole area here. There are similar flood features in the Altai Mountains in Siberia. I did a video on that place during the shutdown, but it appears these flood events happened different areas of the world, opposite sides of the world, the exact same time. Here in Camas Prairie, Big Creek Pass, Wills Creek Pass, Markle Pass, Duck Pond Pass, they have different elevations for the height of the water during the height of the flooding here. Let's just go over to that. Here's what they call inflow sublake notches at Camas Prairie, the different passes here, Duck Pond, Big Creek, Markle, and Wills Creek, the different depths at the high stand between 800 and 1,070 feet deep, between 244 meters deep and 326 meters deep. Good grief, what the heck happened back then? I don't think we have the true story. I think we're starting to figure it out. Now here, just a little history, and this is the introduction to this PDF. Way to read the introduction towards the end, Chuck. It says, in 1942, Joseph T. Pardee published Unusual Currents in Glacial Lake Missoula, which became a landmark publication that helped turn the tide in favor of J. Harlan Brett's hypothesis of a huge flood through Spokane. It says a key bit of evidence in Pardee's paper was a description of the Camas Prairie, where he documented land forms that could have been produced only by currents of unusual depth and velocity. Once again, I will leave this link below if you want to read it. It says, although it is now that the Missoula flood in reality consisted of numerous floods, and did it really? It says there is little evidence for it at Camas Prairie. In a few cases, some deposits suggest different relative ages, but overall, the flood features at Camas Prairie do not lend themselves to establish any chronology. And could it have been one massive event? Well, that's what I wonder. Here is a proposed ancient map of Glacial Lake Missoula, Camas Prairie. Right down here just forms a tiny part of it. Then down here, we have the area of Camas Prairie that was covered, covered by ancient floodwaters. Here is Rainbow Lake and that outlet here. And here is the outlet over Perma Ridge. Here is Markle Pass, Wills Creek Pass. What could have possibly caused that much water to pour over these ridge lines? Deposit material uphill and then over these ridge lines, making these massive flood deposits here and here. Well, I don't think we have it figured out yet. And I think we probably should, since we really don't have a logical explanation for the melting of the ice caps and how that happened in the period it did. But here in this area of the world, evidence of one of the biggest floods that probably ever happened on Earth. Here's the eastern side of Camas Prairie. It says the shorelines of Glacial Lake Missoula. On the eastern side of Camas Prairie Basin, strike of near vertical bedrock is shown by the vertical bedding symbols. That'll give you evidence there of an ancient flood. This video is not about the exact cause of the flood, just documenting the different flood features here. You can definitely leave your comments below what you think caused this massive flood. I know a lot of you have seen Randall's videos, but I just thought I'd make one today. Document this a little better on Google Earth because Google Earth is a great view. You can tell a lot of stories from overhead. That's a video I enjoyed doing, learned a lot. That is Camas Prairie. 
evidence of a massive flood probably coming sometime during the Younger Dries period. Hope you thought that was cool, and you all have a very nice day.